Okay, so uh, welcome to to the talk about uh, instance 3D map uh, data fusion called uh, From Planetary Scale uh, to Street Level Detail. Uh, I'm uh, Thomas Kavan and I'm from Melon Technologies. Uh, let me briefly introduce our company. Uh, Melon Technologies is a software development company in the 3D mapping business. And uh, we have uh, two main projects. Um, first is our in-house uh, proprietary photogrammetric system using uh, computers, uh, computer vision and machine learning. We are creating uh, digital counterparts of uh, the real world. On these images, you can you can <coughs> see uh, on the first they say input images, on the second uh, are computed mesh, and on the third uh, there are mesh. Uh, there is some mesh finalized using uh, machine learning uh, approaches. In the second project, which is called VTS Geospatial, uh, and uh, which is uh, fully open source, uh, we take results uh, from our photogrammetric system and fuse them with the other uh, to virtual, virtual landscape and streaming uh, it to the end devices or system. It can be a desktop, web, mobile client, uh, or for example, Unity or some of uh, major uh, GIS, uh, GIS system. Uh, VTS Geospatial is uh, basically the blue arrow in the, in the middle. Uh, there are various applications uh, where our project can be used, uh, from virtual reality and augmented reality applications uh, through, the, through the interactive simulations and uh, gaming, uh, to geospatial project with focus on 3D, uh, 3D mapping. And lately, we have uh, proudly become part of uh, the Hexagon family, more specifically, Hexagon uh, Geosystems uh, division. But let's uh, to the to, uh, today's topic, uh, which is uh, an instance 3D map uh, data fusion. Why we need uh, to fuse data together? Uh, to answer this question, please consider uh, following uh, use cases. The first is, for example, the 3D map service uh, with a global focus, uh, but uh, with emphasis to one country. There is a global context in there uh, with the Earth model and uh, satellite imagery, but uh, the same map, uh, uh, there are, um, but in the same map, there are more detailed uh, layers with uh, various data like uh, 3D models, VHR, auto photos, and so on. Uh, the second use case can be a presentation, small, very small presentation of a 3D city uh, model as a part of promotional uh, web page. And uh, as the third, I have chose, uh, chosen uh, a hobby web application displaying a topographic model of Mercury. Uh, in this case, we have an uh, even different planet model with various uh, orthophoto uh, layers. Uh, once we have uh, three use cases, uh, each, uh, each of them needs, um, needs to have uh, fused data together. And uh, this is uh, where our motivation for the data fusion comes, to display heterogeneous data, data together. Uh, the data can be heterogeneous in a couple of ways. First, uh, for example, different type of data. Uh, the data can have a different timestamp of acquisition, or, for example, uh, different uh, different resolution. Um, we might uh, we might want to uh, display uh, vastly different data in one map. For example, uh, we want to display a 3D map with a uh, vector cadastre layer, like you can see here. Or uh, we want to display a progression of uh, some action in, uh, in time in one free 3D map. For, for instance, in these photos, um, we can see uh, the 3D model of uh, some construction, construction site uh, with uh, visible progress. 
and of course we want to uh, we want uh, our map to um, include data set uh, data sets with uh, very different uh, GSD. We may want to display a satellite imagery uh, for a distance uh, distance views, but uh, once we we get closer uh, to more detailed view, we want to display VHR data sets. To sum up, uh, our motivation for data fusion, uh, we want to display uh, heterogeneous data together because we want to find connections and relations uh, in the data. Also, we want uh, to watch for changes in time. And we want to see details and uh, the big picture together. And what is uh, important thing uh, in 3D maps? 3D maps can uh, make this relationship uh, and changes way more obvious. So now, uh, when we are properly motivated, uh, let's advance to specific techniques uh, techniques uh, of uh, of server side data fusion. The first one is called uh, no fusion at all. Uh, with this technique, uh, all data are streamed to the client, uh, uh, and uh, the fusion is let uh, completely on it. Uh, on one side, uh, it um, brings high high independency uh, of how data uh, is used on client, but uh, on the other side, uh, it has serious uh, design flaws. The client is uh, very resource consuming, and uh, in the pro uh, in the process of of, of uh, fuse uh, all data data together, this can be very uh, resource consuming process. And uh, specifically in a streaming environment, uh, the bandwidth pretensions uh, are usually unreasonably high in this case. The other extreme uh, is uh, approach fuse them all. Uh, it's the most uh, resources and bandwidth saving approach, uh, but the data uh, can be considered as a system as a static data, since uh, each change in uh, in view results in uh, reload the whole view again. Both approaches uh, didn't suit uh, our needs, so we have started with uh, fuse them all, and uh, have uh, had a very a very lightweight client, but very soon. Maintaining uh, of uh, large fused data set become become uh, tedious thanks to the fragile fragile uh, update uh, operation and uh, thanks to data size. The client the client had uh, very limited options uh, how to work with data, and uh, it was impossible uh, to switch tex textures. Uh, displayed on digital uh, the, on DAMs. So we come up with feature set uh, which our framework must have, and that is uh, how VTS Geospatial was born. Uh, now the VSP VTS Geospatial uh, is an uh, integrated platform from uh, for 3D uh, map application development, and uh, it has a uh, virtual landscape streaming uh, and rendering engine, and of course, it's a uh, fully open source under uh, the BSD2 clause license. The strongest, the strongest point of uh, VTS are uh, first is uh, data sc scalability. Uh, you can fuse to, together countless amount of 3D and 12 hard D data together. Uh, high perf performance streaming servers uh, with uh, bandwidth optimized uh, dynamic uh, triangular ir irregular mesh. Uh, orthophoto generation and uh, uh, static tile streaming. 
and uh, provides a lightweight and fast client libraries uh, for web and uh, for desktop. Uh, there was uh, uh, there were more talks about uh, VTS yesterday, and uh, will be another two in following slot in this room. So please come and see what's VTS in de detail. Usually, um, when you when you have a, a large number of data sets, uh, the, uh, to get a good uh, maintainability and uh, all of all, all, all of the data sets needs to be held separated uh, to make a good uh, user experience uh, fusion must be done on server but uh, there is also need uh, to uh, switch between data sets without rule out uh, the whole view uh, on following slides uh, I will show you how the VTS this uh, is will dealing with this Let's get back uh, for, for, for a while to our first use case a little. Uh, at first, uh, let me, please let me introduce, uh, introduce you briefly mapi.cz. It's a Czech uh, language uh, general purpose web mapping service launched uh, by a company called Seznam.cz in 2005 and uh, come up first with a 3D map covering uh, all Czech Republic uh, in 2015. The service is composed from a large number of uh, uh, various data. Uh, there are different uh, digital elevation models like AdBody, Viewfinder, Panoramas 1 and 3, and uh, more detailed uh, check terrain uh, digital elevation model. There are satelli satellite imagery, uh, which is Blue Marble, Bing Map Aerial, Landsat, and so on. And of course, uh, we have uh, um, mapi.cz has um, uh, VHR uh, data uh, for Czech, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, and for Austria. Uh, in the same map, there is a rasterized based map uh, for outdoor, for winter, and uh, many, many different, um, uh, different use cases. And of course, uh, there are 3D models. Uh, there is a World Czech Republic with 12.5 uh, 12 centimeters per pixel resolution and major cities uh, with uh, 10 centimeters per pixel resolution. And uh, at last, there are uh, vector vector layers, uh, for example, OpenStreetMap uh, tiles uh, and uh, and uh, peak list uh, vector layer. Now I will explain how uh, those uh, various data sets are interpreted in VTS Geospatial. In VTS, uh, terrains are considered as a surface. Uh, terrain itself usually don't contain any visual uh, visual information and should be displayed uh, with at least one bound layer. Bound layers are orthophotos or textures. Simply, uh, they need to be uh, they they need some surface uh, to be displayed on. Both types uh, here are dynamically streamed from a map, uh, VTS map proxy server and uh, based uh, and are based on GDAL raster uh, or uh, VMS or VMTS services. Uh, to fuse terrain uh, with others, uh, it needs to be added uh, to VTS storage, which is uh, the second uh, backend component of VTS. The map uh, configuration file describes how to how to the uh, bound layer will apply. I will not go to detail uh, into it because uh, it's uh, it's just about editing one uh, one configuration file. But uh, here you can see the result. Uh, starting from distant view, we can uh, we can uh, we have a one bound layer with a global global scope. Once we are getting closer, the second bound layer with a better resolution but limitless limited scope is uh, will appear. If we 
return to our use case, we have uh, covered a significant portion of uh, data sets with uh, those two instruments. So uh, digital elevation models are surfaces and uh, satellite imagery, VHR data and uh, base maps are simply bound layers. The 3D models are uh, considered as a, surfi a surface either, uh, but uh, uh, 3D models uh, can contain its own visual information. It's called texture. Uh, the 3D models are static and pre-generated pre data sets uh, converted to VTS uh, using some encoder from uh, from uh, um, a general uh, general format like VAF or, or S SLPK. Um, 3D models uh, are fused with other surfaces when they are added to uh, to the VTS storage. Again, um, there is there is an example of, of configuration. Um, it's not important, but uh, here you can you can see the boundary between uh, between different data sets. Uh, the light part uh, is uh, the city center uh, 3D data set. The darker part uh, is uh, the whole city with slightly lower resolution. You can see that uh, uh, that everything is very very well fused uh, fused together and uh, the beauty of VTS uh, uh, is you have use data from server, but you still are able to work with data set in independently. Like here, yeah, like here, uh, when you can turn off and on uh, one of 3D models. Now, uh, we know we know the 3D models are surfaces as well, and uh, are fused with uh, all other surfaces in the in the VTS storage. The last thing uh, to complete uh, uh, the family are vector layers. In the VTS terminology, considered uh, as a free layer, since it can be displayed on its own, uh, similar like a surface. It's, uh, those are streamed uh, dynamically from uh, a VTS map proxy server and uh, are based on, um, for example, Mapbox vector tiles or uh, OGR features. Uh, and uh, the magic in this is that uh, map proxy, VTS map proxy enriches enrich, uh, 2D vector data with, um, with uh, height coordinate obtained from digital elevation model. Uh, example again, and um, if we turn on the the vector layer here, uh, it's displayed uh, over uh, the surface, uh, but it uh, respects uh, the height information. So, for example, if you see the tower, oh, tower is gone, but uh, the house is calm. Uh, See the see the see the uh, houses and and the parts, parcel boundary. It's it's pretty smoothly um, viewed together. And uh, this is actually the whole mix. Um, vectors are free layers and. Uh, those uh, are uh, not uh, fused with uh, surfaces at all. Uh, the life map configuration is pretty large. Currently, it has uh, 1,463 lines and contains uh, contains uh, uh, four, 14 bound layers, nine surfaces, three vector layers, and uh, now to the magic. Uh, it contains. Uh, uh, 34 so-called glues. Uh, it's a concept how the VTS gives special dealing uh, with the fusion and it allows the client to have a fused data but in the same time work with data sets independently. 
Uh, it's a very very complex context, but uh, there is a very small uh, small uh, demonstration how it works. You can see uh, that the glue is only the boundary tiles with uh, with both data sets uh, in, in 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 here. And that's probably all. Uh, I I I wanted to show you some some uh, some demo from Mappy.cz, but I don't have a time for that. So you can do it by yourself on this on this URL. And for for now, I thank you thank you uh, for listening. And uh, we may now open the floor for questions. Uh, the v uh, what is used for rendering in the front end? Uh, we have a we have a VTS have a couple of clients uh, uh, for rendering. Uh, it has a um, uh, JavaScript uh, uh, JavaScript uh, render. It has a desktop rendering uh, client and a Unity plugin. So uh, it has its own uh, front end renderer. That's a, that's very good question. So there, uh, the question there is a, there is another talk which is called Battle of 3D Renderers. Uh, I believe it's held today. Yeah, so it will be held today in this in this room uh, in following slot. Uh, so if you want to answer for, for your questions, uh, attend this. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, again? Is there a possibility to load two dimensional vector data? Not for you. Uh, like 3D tiles or just models? You mean. Uh, you mean. Uh, information from vector layer. Information from vector layer? Hate. Hate information from vector layer. If. if, if, uh, if, if, if uh, uh, Yes, of course. You can, you can, you can, uh, you can, you can uh, encode uh, your three D model into into VTS and then display it. Right, but the vector layer, like the last one you showed, yeah, is two dimensional. It's two dimensional. Yeah. Can it be three dimensional? Uh, then, uh, then uh, there is no need for enrich it by height information, and it can be showed as I as I believe. Yeah. Um, Uh, concerning the 3D model, the 3D city model, uh, you use um, obviously high resolution laser scan data. So uh, no, uh, it's no. only it's only from aerial imagery. It's, it's only, from only from aerial imagery. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's that's the that's the beauty. Surface model. But the question is, uh, can you uh, can you uh, populate the landscape with trees and vegetation? Is it plain to have a vegetation model? Uh, that's based that on the GIS data because you have um, all the data in the GIS systems. Yeah, the that's more the question. Uh, that's more the question uh, on my colleague. Uh, uh, uh. Ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so if if you can populate with like uh, ready already uh, vegetation that you already have, basically we are m now uh, we are adding like semantics to our uh, first project. So that's gonna that's gonna reflect in VTS two. So in VTS you can now stream like LOD two buildings already. We have some like pr uh, provisionary format for that, and this will also include trees in the future. So uh, I guess uh, there shouldn't be a problem in future to convert like the GIS vegetation data to this format. It will be something pretty standard, I guess. So it should be possible. It's per. Like you, you probably won't stream like every tree in the forest, but it it will be probably based on some like instance right rendering in the end. So it should be should be uh, good, should have good performance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all.